It's hard to believe that the fifth generation iPod Touch is now 10 years old and that the iPod line doesn't even exist anymore. I got this thing back in middle school and it was by far the most significant revision to the iPod Touch lineup of all time. And in this video, we're taking it out of its box a decade later to take a look at the fifth generation iPod Touch and talk about how it stacks up now and how it was when it came out back at the time. This is my review of the fifth generation iPod Touch 10 years later and a look back at iOS 6 and some of the crazy history of this model of the iPod Touch. One of the things that makes the fifth generation of the iPod Touch such an awesome and unique product is it is the only complete redesign of the iPod Touch in the history of the product line. See, you could argue that the first to second generation was a change or the third to fourth was a change, but this is the only complete revision of the entire lineup over the course of the existence of the iPod Touch line. It's the first time that the iPod Touch was seen featuring something besides a stainless steel back, this one having aluminum. It's the first time that the iPod Touch had a built-in LED flash. Every iPod Touch prior to this either didn't have a camera or didn't come with a flashlight. It's also the only time that the iPod Touch ever came with the built-in iPod Touch Loop. No other iPod, including the one that followed this one, came with that feature. It's a unique feature found exclusively on the bottom of the fifth generation iPod Touch. It's also the iPod Touch that brought the lightning dock connector to the iPod line. Up until this point, every iPod Touch had the 30-pin dock connector. This was the first time that Apple had deviated from the 30-pin dock connector since its introduction back in 2003 on the iPod at the time. The first two iPods charged over Firewire. Every other iPod featured the 30-pin dock connector up until the 2012 lineup of iPods when the iPhone 5, the iPod Nano 7th generation, and the 5th generation iPod Touch were the first products to ever ship with the new lightning connector. Of course, one of the biggest design changes on the fifth generation iPod Touch is that it's the first iOS device to feature a four inch display. As a matter of fact, the iPhone 5 and the fifth generation iPod Touch were the very first devices to ever get a display larger than three and a half inches. It was a great pocketable device and the screen size was perfectly well chosen to keep it pocketable and still easily one handable. It's a design that Apple stuck with on the iPod Touch up until its discontinuation a decade after this version. As a matter of fact, every iPod Touch after this continued to hold this excellent design. Also worth noting, this iPod Touch is actually the first iOS device ever made that came in colors besides black or white. Up until this point, every iPhone ever shipped came in two colors and every iPad came in the same two colors. Even the iPod Touch fourth generation only came in black or white. With the fifth generation iPod Touch, they released six different colors, black, silver, blue, pink, yellow, and this product red that we have here today. And it was the first iOS device as the iPhone wouldn't get colors in a variety of colors until the iPhone 5C, which dropped a year later than the fifth generation iPod Touch. With the fourth generation of the iPod Touch, Apple introduced cameras for the very first time on the iPod Touch, a front-facing camera and a rear-facing camera, both of which were okay, but didn't take very good photos. With the fifth generation iPod Touch, they turned that around and introduced an amazing update to the cameras with a five megapixel 1080p camera on the back and a 1.2 megapixel 720p HD camera on the front. The new iPod Touch was able to take great pictures even in lower light scenarios than the previous generation iPod Touch thanks to the built-in LED flashlight on the back of each model. This iPod Touch was the first time that Apple started to take cameras and photography seriously on the iPod and could even be the reason for the loop on the back of each iPod Touch. It became a popular way to keep the iPod on a wrist strap, much like you might have done a digital camera in the past. Now what I will say about the iPod Touch and its cameras is that it actually shot some pretty great photos for the time. The camera on here was on par with the wildly praised 
iPhone 4. And it even shot photos that were on par with the iPad that was released in 2012 of that year, the third generation, or at the time, the new iPad, and the iPad mini that would be released just a few weeks later at a separate Apple event in October of 2012. A few other interesting tidbits about the fifth generation iPod Touch. It actually has a really unique history. The fifth generation of the iPod Touch released in 2012 in 32 and 64 gigabytes. Rather than introducing a 16 gigabyte model at launch, they kept the fourth generation around and increased its starting capacity at 199 from eight gigabytes up to 16 gigabytes and continued to sell a 16 and 32 gigabyte fourth generation iPod Touch. It was positioned in between the iPod Nano and the fifth generation of the iPod Touch, making it one of the more unusual product releases following a similar footprint to what Apple had been doing with the iPhone line, adding a newer model and keeping the previous generation around as a budget option. That was until iOS 6 had its Maps app debacle, and after the Maps app came out to unfortunately bad reviews, Scott Forstall was let go from Apple, and he was replaced by Johnny Ive, chief of design language for the company at the time. He had been working as just hardware design, but with the turn of iOS 7, was given full reign over iOS's hardware and software. That year we saw a complete redesign to iOS, marking iOS 7's introduction. And with iOS 7, we actually saw prior to WWDC that year in May, a 16 gigabyte stripped down fifth generation iPod Touch. It had no rear facing camera and it came in no color options. It replaced the fourth generation iPod Touch offering a low capacity entrance with stripped down feature sets, allowing customers to get into the iPod and into iOS 7. iOS 7 did, however, completely revamp the look and feel of iOS. Up until this point, all of iOS mimicked real world devices. The camera has a physical shutter that closes, the notepad looks like a notepad, so on and so forth. You were either a big fan of skeuomorphism or you hated it. And when iOS 7 came out, the reviews were quite mixed, with some people absolutely loving the new aesthetic and some people not being a fan of it. iOS 7's design overall has stuck around for the greater part of the last decade. We've had nine consecutive years of iOS looking exactly the same, and with iOS 16 having just released, we are looking at it also being very similar in design language to iOS 7. Of course, we've had various updates over the time, but iOS 7 was by far the most controversial iOS release of all time. So that's the fifth generation of the iPod Touch. It brought with it all kinds of major improvements, a complete design overhaul to the popular iPod. It brought with it a brand new camera system, a faster processor that was really highlighted with some of the games that came out over the course of the duration of this iPod's existence. It had amazing software support. It lasted from iOS 6 all the way up to iOS 9 and truly pushed the limits of what an iPod could do. But unfortunately, the iPhone became king and the iPod line existed for two more complete refreshes. There was the sixth generation iPod Touch and ultimately the last iPod Touch was the seventh generation released in 2019 and discontinued in 2022, exactly 10 years after the release of the fifth generation iPod Touch. Thanks for watching and I hope I catch you real soon. Peace.